Hare Krishna. So as you can see, this is a very ordinary looking house, functionally built as a Pretty much all the houses built in India these days, there's not much in line of traditional architecture. Here in South India, at least still, the tradition is going on, especially in Tamil Nadu, that the Hindu ladies, they put rangoli outside the house in the morning. So there's something to show, some, some sign of some culture is going on. Anyway, I didn't want to speak so much about the house as the people inside it, because I personally uh, lived here, uh, or stayed here, on and off over the last few years. By the way, this is just outside Salem, in Tamil Nadu, in India. Salem's a town of about 650,000 people, some nondescript kind of place. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to talk about the people here, and I just lost the page that I made my notes on. Uh, uh, <coughs> they're very ordinary people in many ways, but they're very special people in other ways. The special thing is that they're devotees of Krishna. That makes people very special. And, well, I'll tell you, then you can find out yourself. Devotees of Krishna, well, in one sense, you could say that all the people in India are devotees of Krishna. Srila Prabhupada said that more than once. He said Ev everyone in India is Krishna conscious, even the Muslims. He said that, and, and like I say, more than once. He, he said he, because traditionally on Janmashtami, even the Muslims will take part in the festivals and this and that. <laughs> but these are... Uh, committed devotees, and the story behind that is uh, this family, they were, they're Telugu people who are settled in Tamil Nadu for the last two or three hundred years ago. Their ancestors came here, as did so many people, so many Telugu people in Tamil Nadu. And um, what happened in this joint family, they're all living together. <laughs> the, uh, the father died young. And then the eldest daughter, whose name is Shashi Rekha, and now she's initiated as Shashi Rekha Devi Dasi, by myself. I gave the same name with Devi Dasi added because that's Shashi Rekha means a line on the moon. <coughs> and it's actually a gopi name also. So I gave that name. So then. Uh, she, she was the eldest, and the father had passed away young, so she took responsibility for bringing up the others, and she never married. She was, worked as a teacher for many years in a convent, a private school for many years, and then government service. And then... When it was about time for her to retire, it just so happened that she went to a Krishna conscious program here in Salem. We have time to time public programs. I was speaking at that program. This was about 10 years ago, huh? about 10 years ago. And just after that, uh, her brother, who's working in Goa as a chartered accountant. His name is Ganesh Babu, but he's initiated by His Holiness Ratanath Swami as Gopal Krishna Das. So he contacted Shashi Rekha Mataji and said that, okay, now you're going to retire. What are you going to do? One possibility is to get into more religious things. He said, well, if you're interested in that. So she said, okay, let me look into that. And he sent her Bhagavad Gita in Telugu. Is it? Or in Tamil? He, he gave Prabhupada's Tamil, probably. You're probably more proficient. At home you speak Telugu, but 
you're more proficient in Tamil reading and writing. And then uh, he took you, I'm speaking, she's sitting here, to Mayapur by flight from, he's working as a chartered accountant there, took her to Mayapur by flight from Chennai to Calcutta. Was that the first time in your life you'd flown? You ever took a flight before? No. First. First time, and after that, up and down, and that was it, finished. So, uh, that's a very good way to bring people into Krishna Consciousness, actually, because often people, they're a little pious, and they go to Mayapur, and it's so impressive. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is flowing there in great waves, just like the Ganga is flowing. And People, their natural inclination to Krishna consciousness becomes opened and enlivened by visiting that most sacred place, Sri Mayapur. So anyway, then she became interested in Krishna consciousness in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as given by Srila Prabhupada, and then... Uh, <coughs> Uh, our ISKCON around the same time, the devotees got some land at the edge of Salem city for building a temple. And then the Gopal Krishna, who's there in Goa, he proposed to build a house close to the temple. And it's about, by road, about one and a half kilometers, I guess. And if you could jump like Hanuman, it would be about... Uh, 500 meters, probably. Maybe a little more. But we can't jump like Hanuman. <laughs> Hanuman, that's not a jump for him. That's just a little... If he can jump to Lanka, then <laughs> 500 meters is not even a jump for him. <laughs> so anyway, he built this house for them, and they're all living together. Here, very nicely, cooperating. The, uh, the, the mother of them all is uh, officially, as in India, people often have more than one name. So her name is Koshalya, very good name, the mother of Lord Ram. But at home they call her Radha, Radhabai. Now, the, the, they're living on the ground floor, the whole farm. There's an upper floor also, which they've just kept for devotees to use. And I've personally stayed here many times, about Four years ago when I was staying here, well, I'm staying here because uh, in the temple, it's a construction site in the temple and it's very noisy and dusty and not very conducive for health, so I stay a little bit outside. <laughs> so about four years ago, uh, when I was staying here, yeah, because it's all fields all around, if you can see. It's the urbanization of India. That the fields, so many fields are filling up with houses. That uh, the population is increasing and people are moving from the, from the uh, villages to the towns. Of course, this family moved from the center of Salem, where they were staying, to the edge here to be close to the temple. So, yeah. Uh, what happened then? Uh, we were, it's all fields around, so in the fields there are snakes. And one snake was just crawling here, and Koshalya, the, the, the mother of Shashi Rekha, and grandmother of others, and maybe before long, great grandmother, uh, she, seeing that snake, she, she just fell, she panicked and fell down and hit her head and then she was taken to the hospital and uh, ever since then she's been lying on her, lying on a bed here. <laughs> That's one feature of Indian families up to the present time. Unlike in the West where they just, someone's old and sick, they, they just send them away. They were, or even the children, they won't be living with the parents anyway. And when people get 
They retire at 65 if they have a job, which is becoming increasingly unusual to even to have a job. So they, uh, they retire at 65 when they can no longer do any work. And then they're just declining. And when they, when they can't look after themselves, they put them in some government home. Or, and, or uh, here, here in Tamil Nadu, it's becoming a big thing that old age people's homes, Vrid Ashram, because the, the children are all in America or wherever in the West. The parents sacrifice for the children, thinking that the children will look after them in old age. But in old age, the children are in America and they just pay for their parents to go in some old age home and they die miserably in some old age home. But still, most of the uh, old people in India, they they, uh, they're looked after by their children in their old age. So she's lying on the bed there for the last four years. <coughs> and uh, in the West, they wouldn't do that. It, it, it's becoming increasingly like that in India also. Girls get married and they make a condition before they marry that I'm not, I'm not going to live with your parents. I'm not going to look after your parents. Horrible. They're so selfish. The whole society makes people so selfish. They, they just want, I'll be with my husband and we'll be happy and forget the parents. So she, anyway, she's living here and uh, just lying on the bed there and being looked after by the family. So Shashi Rekha Mataji, she's retired now and uh, she's active in Krishna consciousness. She likes to make collection for the temple and get Bhagavad Darshan subscriptions and do book distribution and this and this. So the, the next sister, usually the joint family is brothers living together. So this is a little unusual, joint family living. The next sister is uh, Kalyani, who's initiated as Kalyani Sundari. And her husband is there. Madhavan. <coughs> She's almost completely blind and very, very happy. She's always very happy. She chants 64 rounds a day of the Hare Krishna mantra, always in a very happy mood by the grace of Krishna. Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma on the spiritual platform. You become very happy. So she's always very happy. And at, at home, they're doing every morning and evening, arati. It's a little distance from the temple. And they'll go to the temple regularly, especially on Sundays. And during Dhammada months, they'll go there also. So they're, they're doing like that. <coughs> then uh, there's another sister whose husband also passed away, and the other sister is also named Kaushalya. And their children are there also, Venkata Vishveshwara, and uh, Janani Narayani, who's also a teacher now. But <laughs> we used to see a little girl, now it's become a big girl. <laughs> uh. Now she's just doing teaching and then in the evenings and on Sundays tuitions also for the children. All the local children, they come and she teaches them all the subjects. And she was also taught then to chant Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. So the parents send the children for learning all subjects you're teaching, huh? Tamil, science, maths, English, art, did you say? What is that? All different subjects and special free gift. They get chanting Hare Krishna also. So they chant very enthusiastically and happily. So, 
I, I just wanted to make a point here, how everyone's living more or less happily together. In this material world, there are always some problems. No doubt. But more or less living happily. And this upper floor could be used for bringing in some rent. How much would you get if you rented it out? Five, six thousand a month, maybe? Something like that. But they just keep it for devotees. When devotees come, they can say, of course, now we have the Grihasta colony there, so it may not be so much needed as it was previously. Huh? Students. Students come and they're given programs here. Oh, one thing I should say about the urbanization, it's not so peaceful as it used to be, because the road is in the front, and it's become quite noisy now. That's urbanization, modern India, like that. So I wanted to make this point. Why am I talking so much about this? What's the big thing? Well, it's, uh, it's becoming increasingly unusual anywhere in the world that people can live together. They won't live together because everyone just wants what they can get for themselves. And not greedy. Mostly people there, like I, like I say, they, they want to send their children to America and they want to get lots of money. and but. To, in the modern age, to not be greedy and materialistic and wanting more and more material things, that in itself is unusual. And it's, a, it's a very good quality because if we're always wanting more and more things, then we're always unhappy, we're always discontent. And how are we going to advance in Krishna consciousness if we're thinking, I have to make my son the topper in the class and this and that and earn lots of money. They're content, content with what they have. So, santushta satatam yogi, that's one of the qualities of a yogi, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, just to be satisfied with what you have. So that's a, a very great quality. I see even uh, sometimes among our devotees, they're very interested to get more money and have to have a fancy car and all these kind of things. So, good. Live peacefully. Live happily. Chant Hare Krishna. And be happy. That's all. Simple. Simple. Simple motto of life. But things become very complicated when we want more than just a simple place to live, a little food, a little prasadam. When we start to want more and more things, then life becomes very complicated. And Krishna, remembering Krishna goes far away. So thank you all for kindly receiving us. There's a saying that you shouldn't, guests shouldn't stay more than three days because then the people get fed up of you. They, 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 they welcome you, but after three days they want you to move on. But then there's no any sign, never any sign that, oh, we're tired, we don't want you here anymore. No such thing. You're always very happy to receive us. So thank you for that. And Hare Krishna. Don't be greedy. Good lesson. <laughs> be satisfied with what Krishna gives. And even uh, then, they're not very rich people, but they're giving for the temple construction. We're after these rich people to give money, and after chasing them, we squeeze out of them something which is not very much. But we find often the people who don't have very much, they give open-heartedly. And it may be, uh, for them, it, it may be a, a, a lot of money. We often see that. People, they just, they openly give. Take it for Krishna. Let, let it be spent for Krishna. Just like this, uh, there was Vamana, his he got some uh, inheritance of some land and he told his mother, just you sell it and give the money to the temple. That's, that's all they, 
that's all he and his mother have, was the, some little plot of land which brought in one or two lakhs of rupees. Was that how? Ten lakhs. So, yeah, so they, oh, they, they got about 15 lakhs from that and the 10 lakhs they gave to the temple and 5 lakhs kept for the mother in old age, like that. So this kind of attitude that, yes, give it to Krishna. Krishna will look after. We can't take anything with us. Let it go for Krishna, for building the temple. So very nice attitude. So please remain happy. Go on chanting Hare Krishna. And uh, can make it a family tradition also, next generation. And you can be very grateful to your brother there in Goa. He was so kind to you that he uh, introduced you to Krishna Consciousness, took you to Mayapur build this house so that you can all live together close to the temple. So that's very... See, he's, he must be earning very good money, chartered accountant. But he also, he's not thinking, I have to keep it all for me and my family. But he's thinking that uh, what we got by Krishna's grace, let us share that with others. So Hare Krishna. Kalyani Sundari Mataji is sitting there chanting. Doesn't and understand. Yeah, and then, and then you think it's our good fortune, you know, that oh, devotees are coming and staying. She can't understand anything that's said, but she's sitting there chanting and happy as usual. Hare Krishna. <laughs>